So, so here at the Mobile World Congress 2011, mm -hmm. at ST Ericsson, in the, you have the LTE planet. What are you showing? Yeah. yeah. So my name is Andreas Wilder. We have the LTE planet here, and we show a couple of different demonstrations about LTE. So what we have here on this side, we have uh, voice over LTE, voice and video. And uh, we have uh, different tablets here. So what we show here is voice over LTE call, running a uh, Whiteband AMR codec. So this is the Whiteband AMR codec. Okay. Yeah. Is that a high bit rate or? That's a very high quality. High quality? Now, I don't know if you can take that and yeah. make a call. <laughs> All right. So I, I wear these headphones here mm -hmm. and uh, I can hear the sound coming through. So this is high quality uh, video conferencing. So can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So this is the white band IMR. That's the voice solution over LTE, which is packet switch only. So it's voice and video or just voice or? Yeah, so we talk over the voice part of it and here you see the video part of it. So it's a video call including a high quality voice. All right. And um, so how high bit rates can people expect to maybe be able to do the video conferencing using LTE? Um, I mean, the, the video conference call takes up about 500 kilobit per second. Um, it's possible to have even higher quality, but that's a standard resolution that, that's normally good enough. Um, the voice actually is normally coded around 24 kilobit per second, which is good enough for very good voice quality. When you do a video call, does it use a lot of power? In the LTE modules and all that? No, no, that's that's not using so much power. I mean, it's it's not really using the full data rate of, of LTE. It's rather using the low latency of the LTE. All right. What are you showing over there? Um, over there? I have one more yeah. thing here that's that's quite important to show yeah. you. So here we have the two tablets doing the voice and video call. Now here we have another tablet, which is a very special one because it's one of the first that has uh, a tablet with Android and LTE. Cool. And you see the L up here, that means we are connected to the LTE network. And which uh, application processor is it using? Yeah, it's using our application processor, the AP9500. So this is a, a dual-core ARM Cortex-A9 STRXON uh, prototype with LTE built-in? Uh, it's, it's a commercial application processor, the device is a prototype. All right. So we're doing together with Quanta. Actually, what you see here is the LTE modem that's inside. Yeah. So, can you explain a little bit what's, what's on this board here? Yeah, okay, here's the digital baseband part, and uh, the part down here is the RF part, which is a four bind solution. Four bind solution? Four bind LTE solution. Yes. So, what does it mean, four bind? Four different bands, frequency bands. So, that, that will work in the in, uh, United States, in Europe, and in Asia. All right, because each of them have decided different LTEs. All of them have different. Uh, Right. Yeah. What's that behind? Is it just flat? Oh, on, just the back, a... on the back side there's the memory. Memory. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically this would be put in here. Yeah, so this one is put here, you can see it here. Alright. So this is the modem inside. And you make it uh, the holes to show the, the modem, not to because yeah. it's hot. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. How much power does something like this use? Yeah, I mean, uh, typically, I mean, this is uh, according to the USB standard, so it's uh, around 2.5 watt maximum. Alright. So basically the same type of device can go into a USB stick that can yeah. be connected externally to a PC. Could you say something in terms of uh, uh, what can be hoped in terms of power consumption for LTE built into a device compared to HSDPA? Yeah, I mean, today the power consumption LTE is still a bit higher. In the second generation, the power consumption will be basically similar to, to HSPA. The, the difference will be still when you transmit at uh, the peak data rates, then I mean you have still some power per bit that you need. But normally, I mean, you will be transferring at, at uh, data rates that uh, allow to have enough users in the cell, so then the power will be basically on a similar level as HSP. And the second generation is not a new network, it's just new chips <laughs> to it's receive the entrance. Second generation here. chipset, yeah. And it's you, you, are you showing some sample of the yeah, second generation? Yeah, we go to that in, yeah? in a minute. So yeah. I'll quickly show you that uh, we have some applications up and running here. <laughs> Unlocking. So I can show you an FTP, so we connect to the FTP server. So those are the standard uh, Android menus, but now it's adapted here to the yeah. tablet and running with LTE. So we select the 50 megabyte file. We start the download. 
Yeah. 15 megabyte. So that's a whole video clip. And it takes a few nice. and it's downloaded. It's like 8 or more megabit per second or something? Yeah, this was going up to like 9 megabit per second. Uh, this is shared between the different demos here, so it's not getting the whole bandwidth of, of the cell. There's a cell on the roof here. No, we have, yeah, we have a base station yeah. here with the antennas here. And okay. then it's connected to the Ericsson core network in Hall yeah. 6. So how and soon are people getting this actually? The whole LTE revolution. Yeah, I mean LTE is available. It's in the market. Um, with devices like this, I mean, will probably be available later this year. So this is coming really soon. Yeah, I mean LTE devices, commercial devices, are available today on the market. Tablets yeah. like this, probably sometime later this year. So now this is a video stream. So we're connecting to the, the streaming server. It starts buffering, and then the playback is starting now. So that's a HD content, 720p. All right. Okay, so that is what we have uh, kind of related to multimedia. So we have one here which shows uh, for multi-mode devices. So when you have LTE and Whiteburn CDMA, and initial networks, they don't have coverage for LTE in the whole country, so you will move out of the LTE coverage some point in time. So for the show, we have a, a video camera pointing outside the live stream, showing the fountain outside of the building. And uh, currently we are connected to the LTE. And what we do now is we tell the modem to disconnect on LTE and reconnect on Wi-Fi and CMA. So I tell it, the video stream stops, <coughs> and now it's searching for the white pin CDMA cell. It takes a moment. Now we are connected to white pin CDMA, and in a moment the video stream starts again. So actually we can see it's, uh, it started raining again outside. Alright, you mean like pixelated? No, no, it's no? It, the people are running around with the umbrellas. Ah, yeah, okay. So okay. <laughs> now we can move back to... So we disconnect, the stream stops, are and we are back connected on, on LTE now. Are all the LTE uh, devices going to be dual mode? No, that depends on the type of device. Um, like phones will probably be in multi-mode. There can be like uh, routers or so which are stationary, they could be LTE only. In the longer run there will probably be also LTE only devices when there's enough LTE coverage. Is it much more expensive to have dual mode? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's more expensive, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a bit larger, so I mean, yes, there's a cost uh, and, and uh, size penalty, but uh, I mean, since it will take some time to roll out LTE coverage all over the countries, it will, for some time, there will be multi mode devices, yes. All right. And I have one more thing I would like to show you on this side here. So, what we show here is really the peak date rates on LTE. Yeah. So what we are doing here is we are connected again to a live network called the Ericsson. This is running a 20 megahertz uh, bandwidth carrier. Okay. Um, we run an FTP download here that's running at around 10, 10 to 11 megabyte per second. 10 to 11, so it's like 80 or 100 megabit per second? Yeah, so on top we run a video stream of 720p and then you see up here that's the combined data rate, just two things together, which means we run about 96, 97 megabit per second, which is basically the maximum you can achieve, which is 100 megabit per second on physical layer, and this is on GCP. So that's the promise of LTE, 100 megabit. Yeah, I mean, clearly you will not see that for every user because they will share the bandwidth, but in good conditions, I mean, that's the maximum a user will see. All right. Uh, so oh, every every demo you had today is basically is that kind of limit? Uh, or is that a can, special demo? We can achieve this here because this cell yeah. is allocated for this one device here. Okay. The other demos we share that and we have okay. a cell with a smaller band with 10 megahertz. So there we can, we could basically achieve up to like 74 megabit per second. So in theory, all, every base station with LTE is, do, is doing 100 megabit that's being shared. Kind of, it could do that, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, it depends on the bandwidth. It depends yeah. on how much bandwidth the operator has allocated. So there are different bandwidths allocated depending on the frequency band it has. How so much like can in, it... Like in Europe, there are few operators that have a 2.6 gigahertz band. This is what we're using in the demo here. That has 20 megahertz bandwidth. There are other operators that have a frequency band that is only 10 megahertz wide. 
So the peak data rates depends on how much. And uh, 10 megahertz might be half or? Yeah, on 10 megahertz bandwidth you can achieve about uh, 74 megabit per second. 74? Yeah. So it's more than half the, the, the bit Yeah, rate. actually on, on 20 megahertz the absolute maximum is like 150 megabit per second. Hmm. But then there are different UE categories defined which say how much the UE can process. All right. Yeah, so there is a category yeah. 3 which is the most standard one which allows up to 100 megabit on the UE. Nice. How much can it upload? Uh, the upload is up to 50 megabit per second. This, uh, the half of it, kind of. Yeah, I mean, on downlink we have MIMO, yeah. which allows two streams in parallel, which means that you get basically twice the, the data rate. Do they need to increase the number of base stations for this to work, or not even? That depends a lot on, on what coverage and what capacity the operator is planning for. Yeah. Yeah. So if he wants to have high capacity, high data rates, then he will have more closely together the base stations. Okay. If he's trying to cover rural areas, I mean, he will not reach the peak data rates, but he will still get good data rates out in the rural area. So 2011 might be the year a lot of people in Europe and the US might get this proposition, now get LTE. Yes, yes. I mean, it's, it has been started both in Europe and in the United States, so I mean, the rollout is, is continuing. So there will be more and more yeah. people in Europe and in North America, as well as Japan, being seeing the benefits of LTE. How big a player in LTE, uh, uh, do you call them modems? Uh, modules uh, will STRX and B mm -hmm. potentially. Yeah, I mean, we are one of the leading suppliers of the chipset technology, so we are providing that to our customers, then who provide them the devices into the market. Right, and you have a second generation in preparation? Yeah, we have the second generation, yeah. so you can move over here. So the second generation that is uh, based on the on Tor. So the M7400 is the first product based on that, the first uh, LTE platform for second generation. It supports LTE FTD and TDD. It supports uh, for HSPA plus also dual carrier. Um, it supports TDS CDMA, which is a Chinese standard. Uh, clearly it supports also Edge GSM. It supports up to eight frequency bands. It's designed from start to, to be small. So you see, I mean, this USB stick is, is uh, quite small. Already. Um, it is designed to go also in like the mini PCI Express form factor that I showed you before. So I mean, this one can go into half size then. Okay. And it's also already optimized for usage in smartphones. So it has all the interfaces to connect to an application processor. So we will see products based on this in, in uh, next year. And you say it's based on Tor. Is the first generation not based on Tor? Or? This is the second generation and the big difference from the first to the second is that this combines the LTE and HSPA plus into a single chipset. While on the first generation we have been doing two chipsets that combine together and that means that you have a bit larger size there. And that will lower the price? Yeah, clearly the, the, price, the price goes down, the size goes down, and yeah. also the power consumption goes down. So when you, you combine LTE and HSPA plus? Yes, yes. All so, right. so what we saw here on this side, yeah. we moved between LTE and Wipen CDMA here. Yeah. So this is the, the first generation where we combine yeah. this chipset with the HSPA yeah. plus chipset that is existing. When they combine, is it faster to switch? from one to the other, or is it going to be kind of the same? Yeah, when, when we move that into the same yeah. chipset, then we also get faster transitions between those, yes. Right, yes. but not instant. It uh, I mean, it still needs the software to, to yeah. support it in an optimized way. Yeah, I mean, it's... Can it buffer one while it stops the other and continue, like, without stopping no, the stream? It, it will, I mean, it will be connected to one of the systems at a time, but the transition will be so fast that we, the, the user will not see uh, a drop of the call or anything. How, how soon is the second generation? Yeah, I mean, be uh, ready. it's sampling in Q2, and uh, we are releasing our platform in this year, and we see first products then in the uh, first half next year. All right. Thanks a lot.